Let's explain that right now. You like you like distress. There's opportunity in distress. Is Greece distressed? Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's extremely distressed, and, and quite frankly, I think that uh, the relatively muted reaction of the market to the Syriza victory, I think, lays out that, that this is not as much as the media likes to hype this okay. headline. Okay, I love that. I, that I happen to agree. Syriza. Yeah. I mean, everything I was reading this morning and yesterday, you know, the far left extremist party. <clears throat> if you look at the team that it's behind Syriza, the economists well, behind them. You're not talking about far left. You're talking about people who are actually voicing a legitimate anti -Australian And here's the distinction, and, and this is some ancient history. There was a movie in my youth called Z, which was a hugely popular movie and was shocking about the left in Greece at the time and the brutality of it. This is nothing like our childhoods, this dynamic right now in Athens. Well, yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> the, the relevant thing is to, to talk about some of the you know, the key people, you've got um, obviously Tsipras, um, uh, Yanis uh, Varoufakis, are former communists. These guys now have moved to the center. They're much more like a Lula than a Chavez who are ripping Thank apart. Thank you. Exactly, nicely yeah. said. That's nicely it's said. It's from the FT. Can you, make a banner? That, can you make a banner on that? That's brilliant. Hume, not like... More like Lula than Chavez. It, it, it like comes that. from brilliant. Tony Barber writing yeah. the FT asking the question. Yeah. So he will be more reformist. He'll be more pragmatic. Absolutely. All anyone. the rhetoric has tacked way to the center. Um, and if you think about what these guys are saying, it's actually pretty consistent with what Draghi's trying to do. Um, you know, they're just pushing back against austerity as, as a way to promote growth, which is right back to, you know, Weber versus Keynes. Um, I think that... You need a legitimate left party to question the austerity pressure from Germany, and this will bring it about. These guys, the Syriza people, as soon as it became obvious that they had a legitimate shot, they were reaching out to the investment community to not only say to, to the media, we're not going to be you know, trying to come out of the euro, but you know, also to the investors to say, listen, what we're looking at is something pragmatic, more focused on growth than austerity. What about these so-called shipping tycoons we always hear about in Greece? You know, Cyprus has talked about taking down the so-called Greek oligarchs. Do you think they're actually going to finally be taxed? Um, I think so. And, and, and frankly, running against the oligarchs is a very good way to start to instill some of the measures that the Germans might want as a, uh, as a trade-off. So if you need to deliver some measure of increased taxation to Greece, you don't want to spook the population that's voted for you. You run it at the upper class. Well, what is the investment opportunity here? I mean, you're, you're the king of distress. Uh, I, I don't say, you know, I see a lot of churning and we're doing an international relations show, it seems like, every day <laughs> with geopolitics. Where's the money opportunity in all this, if there is any? I, I think if your assessment of, of this is that there'll be some headlines um, around some of the initial negotiations between Frankfurt, Brussels, and Athens. Um, it's going to be in, in Greece. Do you um, believe in Euro parity right now? Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think you're going to Everybody's see. climbing yeah, on board yeah. the bandwagon. I, I, maybe not one-to-one, -one, but certainly close. Matteo Renzi said it's his dream. He said Euro-dollar parity is his dream. I mean, and and Euro-dollar parity is not inconsistent with anti-austerity, is it? No. So I, I don't understand why there's such drama around this recent right. what, okay. is, what, what is Obviously, uh, Greece doesn't qualify for the initial rounds of QE. What does QE do for Greece in Europe? Um, the, the targets that are set for them to achieve in July, um, again, you, you read it, you realize that there's enough room for compromise on where Greece is coming from and what, you know, frankly, Berlin's going to want. Um, Hopefully that gives them something that they can achieve and they become part of the QE. Let me swing bundle. totally away from the Hans Hume world. Would you adjust U.S. investments based on the last 10 days news flow out of Europe? If somebody was in blue chip stocks or in their 401k or whatever, how do you as a pro adapt to the amazing news flow out of Europe starting with Swiss Bank? Denmark and on negative yields in Switzerland, et cetera. How do you adapt to that? Um, maybe the wrong, I'm, I'm really blind to the U.S. markets. <laughs> My skill set is not well adjusted. I mean, in our world, the investment opportunities are really amazing. Right. Do, you, do you have any interest in European debt? Uh, okay. You know, we, we are very enthusiastic about Greek debt. Even though there's yeah. no uh, yield? No, Greek oh, debt. Oh, Greek debt, sorry. Greek debt, you've got great, great spread. So on a relative Government, basis, corporate? Um, both. I mean, okay. I think there's, you know, if things work, you're going to do quite well. well. And then there's Hans Hume. Go long Greece this morning.